Hi everyone, this is Paul Girard. I'm a student loan consultant with the American Dental Education Association, ADEA. This important repayment module is on the differences between federal student loans and private student loans. We're going to go through some things that every responsible borrower should know about these different loan types. Now some reminders or considerations as we start this repayment module. First of all, private loans in general are simply not needed to fund a dental school education because federal loans, including the direct unsubsidized and direct plus, also called the grad plus loan, those can cover up to the full cost of attendance for eligible borrowers. Now, if you are an international student and you're not a U.S. citizen and you're not a permanent resident, you may need a private loan for dental school but you're likely going to need to get a creditworthy co-signer who is a U.S. citizen if you're going to be approved for a private loan as an international student. You can check with your lender on those provisions and requirements. Now, you may have some private loans from college as you enter dental school, and if that's the case, we strongly encourage you to find out the terms and conditions of those loans. Be sure you know if they're going to be postponed in terms of repayment while you're in dental school and be absolutely sure you know when they are going to come due and what the terms and conditions are for repayment of any private loans you had from college. If you are seriously considering a private loan in addition to or in lieu of federal loans, we strongly encourage you to talk with the financial aid office at your dental school or your main campus before you take out a private loan. Now, in the next few slides, we'll look at some very important key differences between federal and private loans. First of all, in terms of eligibility, we've already briefly referenced this, but in order to get a federal loan, such as the direct unsubsidized or the direct plus loan, you have to be a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident. And for private loans, you're likely to find those same requirements. If you are an international student, you may be able to be approved for a private loan if you have a creditworthy co-signer who is a U.S. citizen. The free application for federal student aid called the FAFSA that is required for federal student loans, it is likely required at your school for private loans, but check with your school's financial aid office to be sure. Federal loans in general are not based on credit, and in fact, the direct unsubsidized has no credit requirements at all. There is a minimal check in terms of credit for the direct plus loan, simply meaning you have to have no adverse credit in order to be approved for a direct plus loan. Private loans most certainly are based on credit, including your credit score and or the credit score of any credit worthy co-signer that you have for the loan. Some additional key differences in terms of loan limits with federal loans, you can borrow up to the full cost of attendance, less other financial aid each year if you need to. A quick reminder, just because you can borrow the full cost of attendance every year doesn't mean that you have to, but you can with a combination of direct unsubsidized and direct plus minus other financial aid each year. There is a cumulative limit on federal student borrowing of $224,000. In terms of private loans, it's going to be lender discretion to set the annual and cumulative limits. So be sure if you're considering a private loan, you check with them about the annual and cumulative limits of borrowing with their program. The interest rate on federal student loans, it is fixed for the life of the loan and the rates change on new loans every July 1. With private loans, you normally can get either a fixed or a variable rate that will depend on what you are interested in and what the terms and conditions are as offered by the private lender. In general, there are grace periods on both federal and private loans. Certainly on federal loans, there are. With private loans, you likely will have a grace period. Always check with the private lender to be sure you know if there's a grace period and if so, how long that it is. In general, grace periods on federal student loans are six months. In terms of repayment options, federal loans have it all over private loans as regard repayment options because there are multiple options, including time-based plans and multiple repayment plans based on income. With private loans in general, only time-driven plans are available, meaning the lender will take the amount that you borrow, principal and interest, and amortize or spread it out 
over a designated period of time, such as perhaps 10 or 15 years. In general, there are absolutely no income plans available to repay private loans. That's a very important difference, and that's one reason federal loans have much more flexibility in terms of repayment options than do private loans. Now, a few more key differences between federal and private loans. First of all, regarding postponement options, there are a number of ways that you can postpone payments with federal loans, with deferment and forbearance options. With private loans, you will likely be able to postpone payments, but that's going to depend on the terms and the conditions set by the lender. And in some cases, you may actually pay a fee to postpone your private loans with a forbearance option. Regarding capitalization of interest, this is where the loan servicer takes the amount of interest that's built up on your loans and adds it back to the original amount that you borrowed. Very good news on federal loans, effective July 1 of 2023. Interest will no longer capitalize at repayment or when you come out of forbearance. With private loans, you can expect interest to capitalize, but that is going to depend on the terms and conditions set by the lender. Regarding forgiveness provisions, with federal loans, certainly in the event of death or disability, the debt is forgiven. With private loans, it depends on the terms set by the lender. And finally, with federal loans, they are eligible for forgiveness with the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, assuming you meet the eligibility criteria. Private loans are not eligible for public service loan forgiveness. As we wind up this short repayment module on the differences between federal and private loans, some things to consider if you are looking at a private loan for dental school. Once again, always talk with your school's financial aid office. And without really telling you what to do, we would strongly encourage you to consider keeping your entire student loan portfolio for dental school with federal loans. Now, once you get out and get settled and get a job, you may be interested in refinancing your federal student loans with a private lender to try to get a lower interest rate at that time. But because of the repayment flexibility and postponement flexibility on federal loans compared with private loans, it is probably best that you keep your entire portfolio federal while you're in dental school. If you are gonna take out a private loan, be absolutely sure you know the terms and conditions of any private loan you take out for dental school and certainly the terms and conditions of any private loans you may already have from college or a post-bac program. And we'd encourage you to use the charts on the previous slides to help select the lender if you are going to look at borrowing a private loan for dental school. We hope this information will help you as you decide whether or not to take out federal loans or private loans to finance your dental school education. Please remember that responsible borrowing leads to responsible repayment.